ಪಂಜಬಿ ಹರಿ ಗೋಪಿಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿ ವರ ಧರಿ ಜರದ ಮಾಧವ ಪಂಜಬಿ ಹರಿ ಗೋಪಿಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿ ವರ ಧರಿ ಯಶೋಧ ನಂದನ ವ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಶೋಧ ನಂದನ ವ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯೌನ ದಿರವನ ಜರಿ ಯೌನ ದಿರವನ ಜರಿ ಜರದ ಮಾತವ ಪಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿ ವರ ಧರಿ ಯಶೋಧ ನಂದನ ವ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯೌನ ದಿರವನ ಜರಿ ರವನ ಚರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭುಪ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ನೆಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ the only method of purifying our ourselves and our existence in this dark age of kali yuga so before we begin our today's topic so we'll just start with our mangala charan and then we will dive into our today's verses hari krishna and although i am not fully qualified to speak on the subject matters but since uh, our acharyas have emphasized in just doing this tushyanti cha ramanti cha discussing among devotees so this will help me to not only speak to you but but also it will help me to speak to myself and also implement in my day to day lives so, and i also seek uh, blessings from one of you all so that you can uh, pray for me and shower your mercy so that i'll be able to speak something about uh, this verses which i have heard from the authorities and and in this way purify myself thank you so much hari krishna mangala charan om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om gyana timirandasya gyananjana shalagaya jakshuro nulitam yena dasma shri guru eno
ਮੁਕਮ ਗੁਰੂ ਦੀ ਵਾਚ ਜਨਮ ਪੰਗਮ ਨੂੰ ਗਏ ਤੇ ਗਰੀਬ ਮਿੱਤਰ ਬਦ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਦੇ ਤਾਰੇ ਨੰਬਰ ਮਨਨ ਦੇ ਮਾਦਮ ਸ਼ੀ ਚੇਤਨ ਈਸ਼ਵਰ ਹਰੇ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨ so i hope everybody had a wonderful janmashtami celebrations as well as the nando so celebrations these are two main prominent festivals which we celebrate especially in india as well as in the uh, hare krishna movement the international society for krishna consciousness and as the movement itself signifies the hare krishna movement so right so movement means we have to do some halchal we have to do some action we have to do some activity so that is why it is known as movement so we have to do some always movement so that we can progress on the spiritual path of krishna consciousness as we can see in our day to day lives also we do so much of movement so much of endeavor so much of struggle to maintain our livelihood or to maintain our social so called status and all so similarly in this spiritual life also we have to always do endeavor to please the lord and to please his devotees so in that way we have to do a uh, little out of the box or out of the way we have to stretch ourselves for the service of the hari guru and vaishnavas and once the hari guru and vaishnavas are pleased then that is the only means of satisfying because in this world we will not be able to satisfy each and every one especially there is one very nice story comes that there was one son and father so they were carrying a donkey with them um so initially the the father uh, and the son were you know walking with the donkey so people said oh look look at this people how foolish they are they are not able to you know use the donkey properly and the donkey is walking freely and they are uh, they are walking by their side so the, then the father what he does he actually um climbs his son uh, on the on the top of the donkey and as they are going again the people the other people they are commenting oh see how foolish this son is he is not taking care of his father well although he is young he is allowing his father to walk by the walk by the side of the donkey and he is enjoying the ride so after some time the son got down and he asked his father to climb up the donkey so then the father uh, climbed up the donkey and as they were going so after some time one person again pointed out at them and he said how foolish this uh, father is he is not you know uh, taking care of his son properly he is himself enjoying the ride and not giving the chance to the to his son so then after some time this father thought let me and my son enjoy the ride on this on this donkey since we are traveling at a distance place and we have to reach that place so after some time again people are commenting by pointing out towards them that see what a poor fellow donkey and he is carrying the burden of these two peoples so they are not even uh showing their mercy towards this poor animal as well so in this way we can see from the story the story gives a moral principle that we will will not be able to satisfy any person in our day to day lives but if we are able to satisfy the supreme lord if shila propa said if he glances once on us then our life will be successful and shila prabodhananda saraswati thakur one of the our prominent acharyas in the gaudiya vaishnava parampara he also says that what is the use of pleasing others uh, even though the lord is not pleased so then my life is useless so similarly what is the use of uh, and if the lord is pleased then whom i need to uh, do endeavors to please them whom others i need to please so similarly our only goal is to please our our guru and gauranga our spiritual master as well as the lord sri krishna and here the shila propat uh, walked in our lives in the through the medium of his books his his teachings his bhajans his lectures and so many things so that he can uplift us to the path of krishna consciousness and this is the consciousness 
which everybody is having. But as Sri Shetan Charitamrit says, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadhya Kabunai Shravan Adi Shuddha Chitta Karaya Udaya That this Krishna Prem, this Krishna Consciousness is not that something we have to invoke externally. It is always there in the heart of the conditioned soul. Because as the dharma of sugar is sweetness, the dharma of salt is saltiness. And uh, so similarly, the dharma of the soul is to render service towards the Supreme Lord, the Paramatma or the Supreme Personality of Godhead Lord Sri Krishna. So this is the dharma. So our dharma is to serve the Lord. And in this way to love, to be loved and to get loved. To love and to be loved. So this is what our constitutional position is. But as we go against it, then we face uh, the problems of this world. So that's why the Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem, that Krishna Prem, that Krishna Consciousness is always is there, always in the heart of conditioned soul. Shravan Adi Shuddha Chitta there. But when we, after so much of lifetimes, when we have done, you know, sense gratification and enjoyment and uh, sinful and pious activities, then we have forgotten to establish that lost connection with the Supreme Lord. But as we start hearing about the topics of Krishna and his pure devotees, as we are hearing from this today's episode of Parikshit Maharaj and Lord, uh, his activities with regards to the age of Kali personified. So similarly, then when you start hearing about it, Shravan Adi Shuddha Chitta Karayodhan, then our heart, heart gets cleansed and that consciousness evokes. So this is the revolution of Krishna consciousness in this evolution of dark age of Kali Yuga to activate that dormant consciousness in our heart. As we can see, you know, uh, some of us are staying overseas. So when we go to India, sometimes our accounts get dormant, right? You must have experienced many of you. The, our account gets dormant. Why? Because since so many uh, days or so many months, we have not done a single transaction in our account. So that's why what the bank does, the bank puts our account in a dormant stage. So when we when we are going to India or when we are here, the bank sends us an email or they gives us a call that your account is dormant. Kindly initiate some transaction so that this uh, dormant mode will be uh, will be cancelled and it will move to the activate mode or a normal mode. So we, when we do a transaction, we, we do some transaction of let's say of transferring a money from to this account from our some other account so then that then the accounts get activated so similarly we have a, also a, a eternal account with the lord a, a saving account with the lord but since so much of time immemorial we have forgot that relation and we are we forgot to you know make a transaction of love a exchange of love so that's why our account gets dormant but when we start hearing about the Lord, when we start chanting the names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So then our that accounts get activated. And then with such frequent transaction, our bond becomes more stronger. And it helps us to situate ourselves in the position of the, the constitutional position of the, the servant of the Lord or the son of the Lord. So this is the consciousness which we have to evoke. And this was the message of Srila Prabhupada because Srila Prabhupada, uh, he went to the West so that uh, he can help the conditioned souls because he knew that uh, America or New York is the capital city of this sense gratification or enjoyment. So he wanted these people to become devotees first so that by the by their example, because people consider West as imported, so by their example, people will be uh, encouraged, inspired to take up this Krishna consciousness. So thanks to Srila Prabhupada, and in this way we can extend our deepest gratitude to Srila Prabhupada as well for giving us the Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. 
and in this way we celebrated nand utsav yesterday because without glorifying the acharya we cannot make any progress on the path of spiritual life and lord sri krishna also says that if you are my devotee then you are not actual my devotee but if you are the devotee of my devotee then in actuality you are my devotee so similarly if we take shelter of shila prabhupad and if we pray for his mercy as well as our spiritual master's mercy then we will will be able to touch or will be able to uh, establish our relationship with lord sri krishna as well so that's why the guru comes in our life sometimes people say why you need the guru because uh, why you want between you and krishna guru but the acharya gives very nice example that the guru is like acting as a bridge so that he connects us with lord sri krishna and whatever impediments comes in between whatever the speed breakers and everything the other uh, uh, challenges comes in our way on going back home back to godhead the spiritual master removes it and he helps the condition soul to go back home back to godhead and that's why we need to accept such a spiritual master and we need to make him the captain or of captain of our ship so that he can deliver us from this bhava sagar the ocean of material existence which is vast 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 and vast so we cannot cross this ocean with just so we cannot cross this ocean with a just a, a lump of ply or by catching a feed a catching a tail of a dog but we can only uh, cro- can cross this ocean by the mercy of the spiritual master who will and who will help us to imbibe that transcendental knowledge about the lord and he will help us because he is the one who is seer of the truth tad vidhi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadikshanti te gyanam gyani asat pradarshina so we just need to find such a spiritual master and take shelter of him serve him with humility and sincerity and in this way he will give us the transcendental knowledge which is of the utmost important so that we can realize our lost and establish our lost connection with the lord so having this said we will we will dive into our verses of today text 38 so we are reading from shrimad bhagavatam first canto chapter 17 which is entitled as punishment and rewards of kali so as we can see the kali personified he is praying and pleading to maharaj parikshit that please give me please don't kill me because he knew maharaj parikshit was a great administrator and he is ready to kill him for troubling that bull and cow so maharaj parikshit is ready to kill him but he pleads and takes shelter of maharaj parikshit that please protect me and give me some place so that i can stay there and don't harm your uh, your region or your ruling kingdom because maharaj parikshit at that time was the chakravarti samrat he he was the emperor of the whole world not only a a, a particular region but he was the uh, proprietor or the he was the emperor of the whole world so that's why uh, he begged and he asked him for some places and in and towards his answer maharaj parikshit uh, uh, thus gives him permission to reside in the four places so we'll start with this verse which with sutta goswami is narrating to the sages of naimi sharanya sutta vacha abhyartitas tada tasmai sthanani kulaye dadau dyutam panam striya suna yadra yatra dharma chatur vidah translation is translation and purport by shila prabhupad jay shila prabhupad sutta goswami said maharaj parikshit thus so, being petitioned maharaj parikshit thus being petitioned by the personality of kali gave him permission to reside in places where gambling drinking prostitution and animal slaughter were performed but the oh, basic oh, principle oh, is in the oh, city oh, such as oh, prostitution oh, intoxication and falsehood counteract the four principles of the cleanliness mercy and truthfulness the personality of kali was given permission to live in the four places particularly mentioned by the king namely the place of gambling the place of prostitution and place of drinking and the place of animal slaughter shila jiva goswami directs that drinking against 
against the principles of scripture such as shatra mani yagya association with women outside marriage and killing animals against the injections of scriptures are religious in the vedas two different types of injections are there for the pravrittas or those who are engaged in material enjoyment and for the nivrittas for those who are liberated from material bondage the vedic injection for the pravrittas is to gradually regulate their activities towards the path of liberation therefore for those who are in the lowest stage of ignorance and who indulge in wine women and flesh drinking by performing sotramani yagya association women by marriage and flesh eating by sacrifice are sometimes recommended such recommendation regulations are meant for a particular class of men and not for all but because they are the injections of the vedas for particular types of persons such activities by the pravrittas are not considered a dharma once man one man's food may be the poison for the others similarly what is recommended for those in the mode of ignorance may be poison for those in the mode of goodness shila yoga swami prabhu therefore affirms that recommendations in the scriptures for a certain class of men are never to be considered adharma or religious but such activities are actually adharma and they are never to be encouraged the recommendations in the scriptures are not meant for the encouragement of such adharma but for the regulating the necessary adharma gradually toward the path of dharma following in the footsteps of maharaj parikshit it is the duty of all executive heads of state to see the principles of religion namely austerity cleanliness mercy and truthfulness are established in the state and that the principle of prabhu can you please call okay i can read prabhu further are established in the state and that the principle of irreligion namely pride illicit female association or prostitution intoxication and falsely falsity are checked by all means and to make the best use of bad bargain bad bargain the prostitute kali may be transported to the places of gambling drinking prostitution and slaughterness if there are any places like that those who are addicted to these irreligious habits may be regulated by the injunctions of the scriptures in no circumstances should they be encouraged by any state in other words the state should categorically stop all sorts of gambling drinking prostitution and falsity the state which wants to eradicate corruption by majority may introduce the principle of religion in the following manner so first one first two compulsory fasting days in a month if not more austerity even from the economic point of view such two fasting days in a month in the state will save tons of food and the system will also act very favorably on the general health of the citizen there a second there must be compulsory marriage of young boys and young girls at any 24 years of age and 16 years age respectively there is no harm in co education in the schools and colleges provided the boys and girls are duly married and in in any case there is an intimate connection between a male and female student they should be married properly without illicit relation the divorce act is encouraged prostitution and this should be abolished third the citizens of the state must give up in charity up to 50% of their income for the process for the purpose of creating a spiritual atmosphere in the state or in human society both individually and collectively they should preach the principles of bhagavatam by karma yoga or doing everything for the satisfaction of the lord be regular hearing of shrimad bhagavatam from authorized persons or realized souls chanting the glories of the lord congregationally at home or the place of worship rendering all kinds of service to the mahabhagavatas to the bhagavatas encouraged engaged in preaching shrimad bhagavatam and reside in a place where atmosphere is saturated with god consciousness if the state is regulated by the above process naturally there will be god consciousness everywhere gambling of all description even speculative business enterprise is considered to be degrading and when the gambling is encouraged in the state there is a complete disappearance of truthfulness allowing young boys young boys and girls to remain unmarried more than above mentioned ages and licensing animal slaughters of the of all descriptions it should be also once prohibited the flesh eaters may be allowed to take flesh as mentioned in the scriptures and not otherwise intoxication of all description even smoking cigarette chewing tobacco or the drinking of tea must be prohibited hari krishna so this is a very nice word by shila propat and he gives the total idea of the age of kalyuga and, and how to counteract it of course maharaj parikshit was a great ruler and administrator he could stop the kali yuga from entering his kingdom but we have to be also be capable of taking this kind of steps 
which Shila Prabhupada has emphasizes in this purport. Because when we engage ourselves in the in the place of gambling, then the truth principle is destroyed. Truthfulness is destroyed. And when we engage in the place of drinking, then what happens? Our austerity gets destroyed. And when we engage ourselves in the place of prostitution, then our cleanliness is destroyed. And when we engage ourselves in the place of animal slaughter, then our mercy gets destroyed. So that's why we can see in, in the international society where Krishna consciousness is gone, before taking initiation as well, we are given these four regulative principles to follow. Not for becoming a devotee, but for becoming a proper human being, a cultured or civilized human being, so that we can uh, come on the launching pad of goodness, so that we can uplift ourselves on the platform of bhakti or a devotion to the Supreme Lord. So that's why these four principles are, are absolutely necessary. No meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling and no illicit sex. Especially not eating eggs also. In meat eating it comes, not eating eggs. And in drinking, no tea and coffee as well. And also in the category of meat, no meat eating means no eggs as well as no fish as well. So this is what our uh, Srila Prabhupada again um, um, confirms about these principles which are to be followed by the every conditioned soul before becoming a devotee. So these principles are to help us to become a civilized human being and then further we can by the principles of bhakti we can advance ourselves more into Krishna consciousness. And in some ages in Vedas, this is recommended for some category of people who are in ignorance so that we can, they can gradually elevate themselves to this process of Krishna consciousness. So if the people are drinking, then we are not telling them don't drink, but we are asking them to, you know, to do the yagyas and all, uh, or we are encouraging them not to kill the animals, but to do some sacrifices and then they can uh, have their flesh like this. So in scriptures or in Vedas, this, uh, these are there for some ignorant people so that they can gradually elevate themselves, but not for all. Because a food for one person may be the poison for another. This also happens. Like the food for... Uh, uh, the food for lion is uh, deer, but the deer eats the grass. So similarly, it is different. Food for other is food for somebody else or poison for others. So this is there. But this cycle is going on. So, but we should not like animals. We should not act like animals. The the purpose is that, and we should engage ourselves in the proper activities of a human being. And not only that, Srila Prabhupada also says that we also need to follow the Ekadashis so that we can, so that the state will save tons of food. And not only that, people will be, uh, will become little austere, austere. And the young boys and young girls, they should be given a proper education. And at the young age, they should get married so that they will not indulge in him, themselves in other activities and then there will be no question of divorce also because divorce is also one kind of prostitution and in the human society we we have to give this education so that people will try to please the supreme lord by doing various activities for his pleasure like if you are going to office you are earning money then you can give some amount in charity for the godly activities. Then you can also hear Srimad Bhagavatam and read Srimad Bhagavatam at your home so that your place gets purified and you will be also be aware of this knowledge. Nowadays, people are only mad after the 
द नॉलेज ऑफ अपराविद्या पीपल आर ओनली मैड आफ्टर द नॉलेज ऑफ अपराविद्या दे आर टू काइंड ऑफ नॉलेज वन इज पराविद्या वन इज अपराविद्या अपराविद्या इज द नॉलेज विच हेल्प अस टू अर्न लाइवलीहुड एंड पराविद्या इज द नॉलेज विच हेल्प अस टू अटेन दैट स्पिरिचुअल नॉलेज सो दैट वी कैन कनेक्ट टू द लॉर्ड बट नाउ इट इज सब पापी पेट का सवाल है इन दिस कंसेप्ट दे आर ओनली मैड आफ्टर द द अपराविद्या विच हेल्प देम टू अर्न द लाइवलीहुड but these scriptures are also required the shrimad bhagavatam and all so that we can have that basic concepts of god realization and because we are not here to only improve our standard of living but we are here to nourish our soul as well hare krishna prabhu केशव भारती प्रभु हरे कृष्ण प्रभु आई एम नॉट एबल टू हियर यू हाँ वही कुछ लग रहा है बिकॉज वी वेर ट्राइंग टू स्पीक टू यू Sushil Prabhu, Uday Prabhu, Rakesh Prabhu, can you speak something, Rao Prabhu, so that we'll know whether it is. No, no, I started the. Prabhu, I started. Ah, uh, yeah, Prabhu, I know Prabhu. Uh, but uh, I think he was not hearing. Prabhu, I know, I know. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I hope you hear us, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu ji, can you hear me? We. Yes, yes, we can. But you are not hearing us. Yeah, now I can hear you, Prabhu. Ah, okay, fine. So we will we will read the translation and the purport, sir, Prabhu, because number one, that is the system prevailing for the last so many days, and secondly, I think you are not well also. Ah, uh, yeah, Prabhu, little bit not well, but uh, till now, whatever I spoke, you were not able to hear. No, no, we were no, able we to hear you. but i think you were not able to hear so it is fine not much of a problem but uh, okay. now let the translation and the purport be read by uh, the devotees here then okay okay prabhu ji no thank problem. you thank you so i just Only start one question with, uh, prabhu this sotramani yag must be in some vedic script, uh, scriptures something something of this sort yes prabhu it is it is there in the scriptures and it is mentioned for those people you know who are uh, not able to control their self with the alcohol so for them this yagya is recommended and after this yagya they are allowed to drink some some of this uh, uh, like say liquor so in this way they are so that they can gradually elevate it so after the yagya they can have this and so animal sacrifices and all so such kinds of injunctions are also there in the scriptures for a particular this thing so like uh, lord buddha also came before so, and so that uh, he stopped his activities of this uh, merciless killing of animals animal slaughter and he asked the people that this is not the injunction of the vedas and what i am telling you you please follow so in this way the lord also, lord buddha also came and uh, educated or they he neglected the vedas and he informed about the uh, significance of not killing the animals okay bro so okay, bro. so we'll go to our next verse text 39 punascha yacha manaya jata roopa madat prabhu tato antam madam kamam rajo vairam cha pachanam pachamam panchamam राजो वैरम च पंचमम दी ऑफ कली आस्क फॉर समथिंग मोर एंड बिकॉज ऑफ हिज बैगिंग द किंग गेव हिम परमिशन टू लिव वेयर देयर इज अ गोल्ड बिकॉज वेयर वेयर एवर देयर इज गोल्ड देयर इज ऑलवेज फॉल्सिटी इन इंटॉक्सिकेशन लस्ट एनवी एंड एनिमिटी ऑल्दो महाराज परीक्षित गेव कली परमिशन टू लिव इन फोर प्लेसेस 
it was very difficult for him to find the places because during the reign of Maharaj Parikshit, there were no such places. Therefore, Kali asked the king to give him something practical, which could be utilized for his nefarious purposes. Maharaj Parikshit thus gave him permission to live in the play in a place where there is a gold. Because wherever there is gold, there are all above mentioned four things, and over and above, over and above them, there is enmity also. So the personality of the Kali became gold standardized. According to Srimad Bhagavatam, gold encourages falsity, intoxication, prostitution, envy, and enmity. Even a gold standard exchange and currency is bad. Gold standard currency is based on the falsehood because the currency is not on a par with the reserved gold. The basic principle is falsity because currency notes are issued in value beyond that of the actual reserved gold. The artificial inflation of currency by the authorities encourages prostitution of the state economy. The price of commodities becomes artificially inflated because of bad money or artificial currency notes. Bad money drives away good money. Instead of paper currency, actual gold coins should be used for exchange, and this will stop prostitution of gold. Gold ornaments are for women may be allowed by control, not by quality, but by quantity. This will discourage lust, envy, and enmity. Where there is a actual gold currency in the form of coins, the influence of gold in producing falsity, prostitution, etc. will automatically cease. There will be no need of an anti-corruption ministry for another term of prosecution and falsity of purpose. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guruji. Hare Krishna. So here we can see that uh, Marak Parikshit, even though he assigned four places for the age of Kali, but still he was not yet satisfied. He was asking for more. And that's why Marak Parikshit, him, Marak Parikshit allowed him to live in the places where there is gold. So this is also a place of falsity, intoxication, lust, envy, and enmity. Because see, we can see wherever there is a dealings of gold is happening, there is always a cheating kind of uh, a pravritti or a mentality of the people um, due to the prizes and all, and a um, lot of... Uh, uh, this thing, lot of other charges, these charges, taxes, and all this has been all included. In the previous yugas, uh, there were no uh, uh, question of paper notes. They were they were having their exchange of money with the gold coins only. But now in this Kali Yuga, we are having these paper notes. So if we compare ourselves and them, they, are, they were more better at their economical position as well. And Maharaj Parikshit gave this Kali Yuga, this four or five places, because he was aware that there were not such places in his kingdom. And it has been also mentioned here that till the time of Maharaj Parikshit, it was at the end of the Raptopar Yuga and the beginning of Kali Yuga. So there were not such places. But still Maharaj Parikshit gave him these places so that he can he can stay or he can he can expand his expansion in this particular areas and just took because Marat Parikshit was a great administrator and he was aware about the effects of Kali Yuga. so that's why he didn't allow him to enter his kingdom apart from these places so that's why it has been mentioned here that this wherever this gold is so there is this kind of these things and earlier there was a was uh, exchange of currency was always going uh, always took place in the gold standards only but now this has been encouraged about the paper notes and uh, these things so the gold co coins eventually disappeared and that's why it, you now it helps uh, the people to you know to act falsely and increase increase power prostitution and all so this has to be discouraged by the state because at that time there were, you know, strong administrators like Marat Parikshit. But nowadays we see 
that we don't have such powerful administrators. Yeah, but we have, and eventually we can uh, see their effects, like uh, in stopping the corrupt corruption of, you know, at, after some point of time, they're in, introducing new currency notes so that the people will not accumulate the old notes more and increase the inflation. So this we can see from this, uh, nowadays our ministers as well. So this is a good sign so that the people will not also fall victim of these uh, nefarious activities of Kaluka. And if these things happens, then uh, if the dealing in gold coins happens, then Srila Prabhupada writes, then there is a no need of anti-corruption ministry also. So this is what the purpose of Srila Prabhupada. So we'll move on to the next verse, text 40. Amuni panchastana nihi adharme prabhava kalihi autarye nadattani nyavasatan nideshakrit. Translation purport by Shlomo. Translation. Thus, the personality of Kali by the directions of Maharaj Parikshit, the son of Uttara, was allowed to live in those five places. Purport. Thus, the age of Kali began with gold standardization and therefore false city, intoxication, animal slaughter and prostitution are rampant all over the world. And the saner section is eager to drive out corruption. The counteracting process is suggested above and everyone can take advantage of this suggestion. Jai Shri Prabhupada. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. So here this uh, uh, Parikshit Maharaj allowed this Kali Yuga finally to reside in only... Uh, only in these five places and not more than that because Maharaj Parikshit was aware about uh, about the about the principles of religion and as the as the guru is the representative of the Lord so similarly a king is also a representative of the Lord so that's why so in order to give his subjects the proper education and proper culture and proper religion, Maharaj Parvarikshi didn't allow this Kali Yuga to advance further or to expand further. And with this five places, he just kicked him out from his kingdom. And and this age of Kali, the Kalu personified people, he was just waiting for some discrepancy in his kingdom so that he can again enter and expand his expand his uh, jurisdiction about this uh, about these five things which are mentioned and he can just uh, expand his expansion in those five places and we can see the senior section in our society is always against this corruption and they are always very eager to remove this uh, lusty principles and falsity intoxication animal slaughter and all but because of the because they are not fully uh, provided with strength, so they are not able to do it. So that's why this lies, this right lies in always in the hands of ministers, so that they can uh, make a proper uh, government. So, so in this way, they will be able to stop this. Because no matter how many uh, United Nations which will make for the world peace and prosperity, unless and until. Shila Prabhupada says we will stop this this corruption act in the form of this meat eating, intoxication, gambling, illicit sex, and this gold dealings. And gold dealings should be controlled. We cannot stop the gold dealings, but we can control with with proper regulations so that the people in general will be peaceful. So we can take suggestions from the purport the, the points of the Shila Prabhupada which are mentioned in the uh, in the verse pillows. The purport of the verse below. Text 41. Athaitani na seveta bhubushu purusha kwachit visheshato dharmashilo raja loka patir guru. Translation purport by Shla Prabhupada. Jai Shla Prabhupada.
yeah translation hari krishna therefore whoever decides progressive well being especially kings religionists public leaders brahmanas and sanyasis should never come in contact with the four above mentioned religious principles purport the brahmanas are the religious perceptors for all other castes and the sanyasis are the spiritual masters for all the castes and orders of society so also are the king and public leaders who are responsible for the material welfare of all people the progressive religionists and those who are responsible human beings are those who do not want to spoil their valuable human lively uh, lives should refrain from all the principles of irreligiosity especially illicit connection with women if a brahmana is not truthful all his claims as brahmana at once become null and void if sanyasi is illicitly connected with women all his claims as sanyasi at once become false similarly if the king and the public leaders are unnecessarily proud or habituated to drinking and smoking certainly they become disqualified to discharge public welfare activities truthfulness is a basic principle for all religions the four leaders of the human society namely the sanyasis the brahmana the king and the public leader must be tested crucially by their character and qualification before one can be accepted as a spiritual or material master of society material master of society he must be tested by the above mentioned criteria of character such public leaders may be less qualified in academic qualifications but it is necessary primarily that they be free from the contamination of the four disqualifications namely gambling drinking prostitution and animal slaughter jai shri la prabhu hare krishna bro thank you so much so now uh, so now it has been mentioned here that those who desires progressive well being especially the kings religionists public leaders brahmanas and sanyasis should never come in contact with the above mentioned four prince uh, above mentioned in religious principles because why it is mentioned sukhdev so goswami is telling here because the kings hare krishna sorry for the delay so the kings and the administrators and the public leaders and the brahmanas and sanyasis are the main pillars of this varnashram dharma because that's why this varnashram dharma has been mentioned in our scriptures or in our sanatan dharma because brahmanas are the ones who are giving or the sanyasis and brahmanas are the one who are the with mahans who are the panditas who are giving directions to the other three varnas or varnas and ashramas because brahmanas and and the kshatriyas being um, always adher- adherent with the scriptures so they know how to live in peace and prosperity so this education they are giving it to the other three uh, categories like the kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras and especially the kshatriyas because the kshatriya leaders cannot act whimsically they should act always under the directions of the of the sanyasis and the brahmanas and the, then comes the uh, vaishyas as well so they have also their duty to perform uh, with regards to the brahmanas and the kshatriyas and the shudras so it is also been explained in our scriptures that the brahmana is the head of the society and kshatriya are like the arms of the society and vaishyas are, are like the belly of the society because they helps to cultivate by krishi go raksha vanijya to maintain the uh, belly or to maintain the existence of all people by the food and other uh, ingredients uh, for yagya and all and the other is known as the last but not the least is the shudras the shudras are considered as the legs because they serve all the all the three categories the brahmanas vaishyas and the kshatriyas and in this way they render their service accordingly so this if this functioning goes in a right way then where will then where will be all peace and prosperity in the society but now what is shila propa writes here 
that people are all uh, people are electing uh, a particular leader on the basis of just votes so this we called it as democracy but shila propat calls it as demon crazy only in terms of academic qualification if we elect or a such person then there will be no peace and harmony in the society so that's why we should check the particular leader if he is following the advice of the brahmanas if he is reading the scriptures or he is well versed with the with the roles and duties of the particular of the kings he should not smoke and uh, and tell the people that you should you should not smoke so if he is smoking he should not tell others that you please don't smoke so this is not so he should be like uh, the acharya or he should he should be like the raja rishi or the saintly king first he should implement and then only he should convey the same to the to the subjects in general so in this way he will be a proper leader and with this qualification and with this moral codes and character then he should be given this post of a public leader or administrator so that he can give a right direction to the subjects because in the bhagavad gita it is also mentioned yad yad acharati shreshya satta devatara jana sayat pramanam kurute lokastadanu vartate that whatever great people authorities perform the common man will follow पीपल इन दीडर Uh, render services to the others and what is our dharma it has been all all mentioned in this uh, divine scriptures with of lord sri krishna and not only that only the brahmanas or kshatriyas duty is not this to you know to protect themselves from the age of kaliyuga but also the shudras and vaishyas they all need to cooperate together so that they so that they can make a happy and peaceful society where everybody can live uh, properly without disturbing others so that's why so that's why it has been uh, emphasized here that if they want to be free from this uh, irreligious if they want to refrain from the principles of irreligiosity then they should avoid these four places For the uh, four places, especially the meat eating, intoxication, gambling, and illicit sex. Text forty-two. Frishasya nashtam strin padan tapaha shaucham dayamiti pratish pratishanada asvasya mahimcha samavardhayat. अर्थ इन देप ऑफ ए का he could actually estimate the general condition of his kingdom and therefore he at once took proper steps to reestablish the lacks of the bull namely austerity cleanliness mercy and for the general benefit of the people of the world he saw that the gold stock might be employed for stabilization gold is certainly a generator of falsity intoxication prostitution enmity and violence but under the guidance of a proper king or public leader or a Brahm, brahman or sanyasi the same gold can be properly utilized to reestablish the lost legs of the bull the personality of the religion maharaj parikshit therefore like his grandfather arjun collected all illicit gold kept for the propensities of kali and employed it in sankirtan yagna as per the instruction of the shrimad bhagavatam as we have suggested 
before one's accumulated wealth may be divided into three parts for distribution namely 50% for the service of the lord 25% for the family member and 25% for this personal necessity spending 50% for the service of the lord or for prop propagation of spiritual knowledge in society by way of sankirtan yagna is the maximum display of human mercy people of the world are generally in darkness regarding spiritual knowledge especially in regard to the devotional service of the lord and therefore to propagate the systematic transcendental knowledge or devotional service is the greatest mercy that one can show in the world when everyone is taught to sacrifice 50% of the accumulated gold for the lord service certainly austerity cleanliness and mercy automatically ensue and thus the lost three legs of the personality of the religion are automatically established when there is sufficient austerity cleanliness mercy and truthfulness naturally mother earth is completely satisfied and there is very little chance for kali to infiltrate the structure of human society hari krishna hari krishna prabhu thank you so much so again a very nice verse and shila prabhu writes a beautiful purport to it so by giving this five places to the age of kali yuga mark parikshit establish re establish the lost legs of the personality of religion bull by encouraging activities is sufficiently improved the condition of the world so in this way parikshit mara satisfied both the uh, satisfied and nourished both bull and the earth who were suffering terribly uh, because of this age of or the by the kali personified so in this age we can see similar to the people will be dressed like a kingly attire but their activities will be like that of that of age of kali so this is the rule or of the age of kali and maharaj parikshit certainly cheated because he was aware that in his kingdom there is no such activities of meat eating intoxication gambling and illicit sex so with this he took proper steps and he just kicked out uh this kali personified from his kingdom and and by establishing this uh four legs of the bull austerity cleanliness uh, mercy and truthfulness he nourished the bull and we can see that in this uh, human civilization there is a lot of importance of gold and all but if that gold is properly employed in the in the right service then that will be beneficial to the society otherwise that same gold can be bring uh, you know lot of falsity and other uh, these things also prostitution any media violence also so that's why we should be aware that gold is not bad but the use of gold uh, but it it depends upon the use of gold for example this arjuna also for uh, yudhishthir maharaj rasuya yagya arjuna collected lot of wealth uh, um, or arjuna just um, he gained or he brought or he conquered uh, really uh, he went and conquered all the all the places from each that uh, each direction and he brought lot of wealth for maharaj yudhishthir to perform the rajasuya sacrifice so similarly maharaj parikshit also uh he collected all illicit kept gold kept for purposes of kali and he employed it in the sankirtan yagya or the bhagavata dharma or whatever gold uh, uh the society had maharaj parikshit also collected that gold so and he kept in his kingdom because the public used to pay taxes to the administrator to the king so similarly maharaj parikshit collected that all that gold and he employed in the service of the lord and he educated uh, his subjects with this proper knowledge of uh, the teachings of shrimad bhagavata dharma and shila prabhupada also says that we should also employ such gold in the service of the lord if we have lot of wealth then we can uh, encourage the deity worship we make we can make uh, huge temples and there on the with gold and other jewels 
we can decorate the lord and we can do uh, elaborate deity worship process we can do abhishek and in this way we can also engage everybody in this sankirtan yagya because the name itself signifies the sankirtan yagya so in this yagya we don't have to um, do this yagya alone but we should invite everybody and we should take along everybody so that we can go back home back to god in this in this very life and secondly when we engage others in the service of the lord then the lord becomes very pleased with our endeavor as he says in the gita as well that one who shares this knowledge with others he is very dear to me so that in this way we will be also become dear to the lord and when we spend 50% of our hard and money in the service of the lord then especially in the activities of propagating krishna consciousness then that gives us a huge return on our investment and 25% we should keep for our family members and 25% for our personal necessities or for our emergency this things for our emergency situations so in this way we can act in this way by acting in this way what will happen people will it will be a happy place for everybody no one will cheat other for something and the people will be able to live peacefully because in this dark age of kali yuga people are always disturbed misguided and they are having a short lives um and secondly because of this and why this is happening because they are not properly following the scriptures if they pro- properly follow the scriptures then the scriptures will act as a light for them because in this dark age of kali yuga there is no hope for happiness unless and until we will take the shelter of the shrimad bhagavatam and the authorities like marak parikshit and the brahmanas which are mentioned here that the brahmanas were always there to guide marak parikshit and by their guidance only marak parikshit was taking decisions and was maintaining his subjects properly so this devotional service or this bhakti principles should also be given because this is the birth right of everyone so this bhakti principle or the devotional service should be encouraged in the society so that the people by engaging in the service of the lord people will become truthful people will become more austere and not only that people will become more clean people will show mercy towards other because unless and until we will we'll take up the devotional service we will not be able to decorate ourselves with this beautiful qualities of a devotee which is required so yasyasti bhaktir bhagavati akinchana sarva guna satra samsate sura haro abhaktasya kuto mahad guna mano rachena sati asati dhavato bahi so this uh, pralad mara says to nasimade that yes yes the bhakti just by doing the bhakti towards you oh my lord narsimha dev one gets decorated with all the good qualities sarvar guna satra samsate sura whatever the good qualities of demi gods are also there that he imbibes in himself and then what to speak of the people who are just doing their duties academically or they are maintaining their family and doing little dan and by these activities they are just roaming around the things asat things or the temporary things dhavato bahi but those who take up the devotional service my lord they get nourished with all the good qualities of the devtas as well so so that's why this devotional service is so important for this human society just by taking up the devotional society all the good qualities we can imbibe in ourselves and it will come by default and it is a by product as well and everybody will live with peace prosperity with truthfulness without any duplicity and in this way they will all make their life successful and they can go back home back to god so so in this way we have to also spend our lives uh, by using the things in the service of the lord because the knife is a, the knife is like object 
right? If it is in the hand of surgeon, it can help to survive the, the life of somebody. But if that same knife is in the hand of a gangster or a criminal, it can take somebody's life as well. So similarly, this gold is not bad, but it gold is like a tool. But if we engage the gold in proper service of the Lord for the people in general, if we can make such beautiful temples and we can make some beautiful uh, uh, ornaments for the Lord, and then if we engage everybody, then it will be very, very much beneficial for all of them. Because when I throw party for myself and I decorate myself with gold, jewelry and other silver things, then that, that will create a jealousy in the heart of others. But when, when we come together and when we decorate the Lord with this uh, beautiful gold ornaments and jewels and all, then the people will not get jealousy. People will be encouraged to see that, no, I am not the king. I am not the master. The Lord is master. And when the things and riches are all employed in the service of the Lord, then it gives uh, a soothing um, sensation in the heart so that we can we feel we can feel happy and we can realize no I am not the master I am just a servant of the master Hare Krishna we will go to the next verse text 43 and 44 are together Suresha etari adhyastha asanam parthi vochitam Pita Mahane Bhyo Paniyastam Rajnar Anyam Vivikshata Aste Adunasa Rajarishihi Kauravendra Sriyolasan Gajaha Vema Bhagas Chakravarti Vriyakshavaha Translation. Translation. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Jai Srila Prabhupada. The most fortunate emperor, Maharaj Parikshit, who was entrusted with the kingdom of Astinapur by Maharaja Yudhishthira, when he decided to retire to the forest, is now ruling the world with great success due to the due to his being glorified by the deeds of the king of Kura Akuru dynasty. Purport, purport by Srila Prabhupada. The prolonged tracks, sacrificial ceremonies undertaken by the sages of Naimasharanya were begun shortly after the demise of Maharaj Parishad. The sacrifice was to continue for 1000 years and it is understood that in the beginning some of the contempor uh, contemporaries of Baladev and the elder brother of Lord Krishna also visited the sacrificial place. According to some authorities, the present tense in present tense is also used to indicate the nearest margin of time from the past. In that sense, the present tense is applied to the reign of Maharaj Parikshit here. For a continuous fact, also present tense can be used. The principles of Maharaj Parikshit can be still continued and human society can still be improved if there is determination by the authorities. We can still purge out from the state of all the activities of immorality induced by the personality of Kali if he if we were we are determined to take action like Maharaj Parikshit. He allotted some places for Kali, but in fact Kali could not find such places in the world at all because Maharaj Parikshit was strictly vigilant to see that there were no places for gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter. Modern administrators want to banish corruption from the state, but fools as they are, they do not know how to do it. They want to issue licenses for gambling houses, wine and other intoxicating drug houses, brothels, hotel prostitution and cinema houses, and falsely in every dealing, uh, falsity in every dealing even in their own and they want at the same time to drive out corruption from the state. They want the kingdom of God without God, God consciousness. How can it be possible to adjust two contradictory matters? If we want to drive out corruption from the state, we must first of all organize society to accept the principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy and truthfulness. And to make the 
condition favorable we must close all places of gambling drinking prostitution and falsity these are some of the practical lessons from the pages of shrimad bhagavatam jai shri jai shri la prapad hare krishna प्रभु आप म्यूट पे हो प्रभु हरे कृष्ण प्रभु सॉरी थैंक यू प्रभु फॉर रीडिंग एज वी कैन सी फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्स दैट महाराज परीक्षित वाज वाज द किंग ऑफ हस्तिनापुर एट दैट टाइम व्हेन द व्हेन द एज ऑफ कली पर्सनिफाइड केम इनटू हिज रीजन और केम इनटू हिज किंगडम so in the earlier chapters uh, we discussed all this that uh, there is a chapter called pandavas retired timely so when the pandavas retired timely they handed over the kingdom to maharaj parikshit and maharaj parikshit was also following the hierarchy of the four fathers he was also a great king and he was living as a saintly king as a raj rishi and in this way he was leading his subjects and was ruling with proper principles because as we discussed he is the representative of the god the king is the representative of the god so he should give the same message of the lord so that and people can you know develop that god consciousness and they can make their life successful and by following this varnashram dharma they should do their duties faithfully in the service of the lord and in this way they can be freed from the reactions of karma and attain salvation at the end of their lives nowadays people in general want peace and prosperity but they don't want god realization so how is this is going to be possible because these two are contradictory contradictory things because if you want if you don't want god then how can you expect uh, uh, in that godless civilization that everything will be in peace and harmony this is not possible always shila propa also used to tell that people want ram raj but they don't want ram then what is the use of uh, their raj or their ruling so similarly this krishna consciousness or this ram consciousness or this godly consciousness if we will not establish in the society then the people will be very much jealous envious uh untruthfulness falsity intoxication gambling this will all this bad qualities will will always be on the top but if we educate the people with this right knowledge uh, then there is a chance of progress for the people in this dark age of kali yuga and the sages of naimisharanya they also uh, in the beginning of kali yuga they assembled at the place of naimisharanya which is near lakhnau and they decided to perform sacrifice for 1000 years for the benefit of human society and at that time lord baldev also uh, visited them in that sacrificial place so the sages always think for the good of the others the brahmanas the sages the sanyasis and the kshatriyas are supposed to follow their rules and regulations in ruling the kingdom so that there will be peace and prosperity in in every aspect but if we nowadays people are not following the brahmanas the elders so how they can expect that they, they will be successful although academically they may get successful but but internally the soul is always unhappy the soul is not nourished because of this godless civilization so that's why it is very much required. so this is very important in this age of kali to follow the principles which maharaj parikshit uh, followed in his kingdom so in our day to day lives also we should be more practical to accept the favorable things to advance in our krishna consciousness and we we should be very strict and vigilant like maharaj parikshit to uh, to disregard whatever it, is not favorable for our krishna consciousness then only we will be able to conquer this 
principles of irreligiosity, falsity and this and we'll be able to establish these four pillars of success. So the gambling, drinking, uh, prostitution and falsity uh, is very prevalent in the society as we can see. But by developing this Krishna consciousness centers by temples or by uh, attending such discourses on the Srimad Bhagavatam, people will be able to see the actual reality of the society. And this will encourage them to take the path of Krishna consciousness more seriously. Because this is just now 5000 years and we can see the Skal Yuga is so uh, advancing rampantly. As the Kal Yuga will uh, will increase, people will lose faith in scriptures. People will lose, lose faith in the saint, uh, saintly personalities and the, and the elders. So this is the time for us to hail such discourses, to invite them, to give them this Srila Prabhupada books so that they will be aware. Many people are also not aware of the actual reality of this society. And they are thinking that whatever they are doing is absolutely right. But this is not the case. We should always read and introspect uh, and study the scriptures very scrutinizingly so that we will get the idea, we will get that clarity that what is the goal of human form of life is and how can I use this human form of life not only for decorating or enjoying but to engage in the service of the Lord or to uh, accept the principles of uh, principles for the favorable of, for which are favorable for the devotional service and reject the principles which are not favorable for the devotion, devotional service and should have a steady faith in the Lord that Lord will always protect me. Rakshishya to Vishwa say that, that the Lord will always give me the Raksha. He will always protect me because the government who are collecting the taxes, we think that they are our Raksha but they are actually our Bhaksha. We think that they are protecting us but no, they are actually exploiting us. So we should be very careful in bringing this God consciousness through this scriptures of Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita so that there will be peace and prosperity uh, everywhere and uh, we will see that people will always uh, be truthful, morally will have the good characters and this we can see uh, from this. From the external education, from the material education, we will not get these qualities and characteristics but when we come in contact with such scriptures and the saintly persons we will be able to imbibe such godly qualities Hare Krishna so we will go on to our final verse for today which is the concluding verse of this particular chapter as well text 45 Itham bhuta nubhavo ayam abhi manyo suton ripaha yasya palayata kshonim yuyam Shatraya Dikshitaha Translation Prabhupada by Shla Prabhupada Jai Shla Prabhupada Hare Krishna Translation Maharaja Parikshit, the son of Abhimanyu, is so experienced that by dint of his expert administration and the patronage, it has been possible for you to for a sacrifice such as this. Purport, the Brahmanas and the Sanyasis are expert in spiritual advancement of society. Whereas the Shetyas are the administrators and expert in the material peace and prosperity of human society. Both of them are pillars of all happiness and therefore they are meant for full cooperation for common welfare. Maharaja Parikshit was experienced enough to drive away Kali from his field of activities and thereby make the state uh, receptive to spiritual enlight enlightenment. If the common people are not receptive, it is very difficult to impress upon them the necessary necessity of spiritual enlightenment, austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness, the basic principles of religion, prepared the ground for the reception of advancement in spiritual knowledge. And Maharaja Parikshit made this favorable condition possible. Thus, the Rishis of Naimisharanya were able to perform the sacrifices for a thousand years. In other words, without state support, no, doc no doctrine of philosophy of religious principles can progressively advance. There should be complete cooperation between the Brahmanas and Khetriyas for the common good. Even up to Maharaja Ashoka, the same spirit was prevailing. Lord Buddha was sufficiently supported by King Ashoka 
and thus his particular cult of knowledge was spread all over the world. Thus, the end of end of Bhakti Vedanta purpose of the first cantos, 17th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Punishment and Reward of Kali. Jai Sri Lavarapath. Prabhuji, you are on mute. Sorry, bro. So we can see this. Uh, thank you, bro, for reading. So this we can see from uh, this beautiful verses that the Shuddha Goswami is glorifying Maharaj Parikhit again and again. Sometimes he is telling him this is Uttama, uh, this Uttara Sutta, or he is the dear son of Mother Uttara. And here he is telling that he is the dear son of Abhimanyu. So uh, Abhimanyu is the is the father of Maharaj Parikshit and by dint of his expert administration and patronage, uh, Sutta Goswami is telling that due to the expert administration and patronage of Maharaj Parikshit, you are still able to perform the sacrifice. So the Brahmanas can only do yajna sacrifice homes and hold the spiritual discussions and hold some programs of Krishna consciousness or godly activity if the government is favorable. If the government is not favor favorable, then there will be no question of such uh, gatherings and all. So that's why uh, um, Sutta Goswami is telling here that because of Maharaj Parikshit's strict administration towards the age of Kali Yuga, that the Brahmanas are like you, will, are able to perform the sacrifices. So we can see from the from here and Srila Prabhupada also emphasizes that the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas they are working together for the welfare of the human society. The Brahmanas, by their expert knowledge, since they are reading the scriptures scrutinizingly, uh, that yajna dan they are not only doing the yajyas and they are not doing only the dan, but they are doing this adhyan of the scriptures. And by this transcendental knowledge, they are able to give guidance to the Kshatriyas or the powerful administrators who are the tax collectors and so forth. So in this way, if they both call a collaborate, then they can lead the people or the subjects in the right direction. Because if the government is not taking advice from such, uh, such saintly persons, then they will act whimsically for their own sense gratification. But here Srila Prabhupada is telling that whatever we are doing is, is doing as a representative of the God. So this Kshatriyas, uh, the king is also the representative of the Lord. Similarly, the Brahmanas are also the representatives of the Lord in the matter of this Vedic knowledge. So this knowledge we should take from the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas should use it in the service of the Lord, in educating their subjects in proper way of godly consciousness. Because if the leaders will not teach the principles of devotional service to the people in general, then it will be difficult for the people to accept these principles. So that's why they, we require the good leaders. Leader is the one who will lead the society in the proper direction. But if these leaders are not spiritually educated, then they will act whimsically just for capturing this kingdom and for enjoyment and all. So we can see that because of this uh, unwanted Kshatriyas, the burden of the earth gets increased and then the earth goes and prays to Lord Brahma and then Lord Krishna appears. So similarly, the Srimad Bhagavatam also appeared in this dark age of Kali where people are Kalo Janishya Mana Nam Dukha Shokha Tamo Nidam Anugraya Bhakta Nam Supunyam Yatano Vesha that to do anugraha or to do favor to the devotees, Kalo Janishya Mananam, in this dark age of Kali Yuga, Kalo Janishya Mananam, Dukkha Shokha Tamo Nudam, that people are so engrossed with Dukkha, Shokha, lamentation, fear, the miseries and all, Dukkha Shokha Tamo Nudam, Anugraha Bhakta Nam, and to counteract this and to favor the devotees, Supunyam Yatanad Vasya, Yeshaha, that Lord Krishna performs so miraculous and superhuman activities for the conditioned soul, so that we can get attracted to his pastimes and we can 
go back from back to god it so that's why shrimad bhagavatam also appears so that we can keep our faith in shrimad bhagavatam and the and the injunctions of the shrimad bhagavatam just by hearing and applying in our day to day lives we will be able to uh, experience that param ananda or the supreme happiness which we will not get from any other source so that's why so if you want to do yagya also then we still require the favorable government and if that favorable government is guided by proper saintly persons in the matter of krishna consciousness or godless godly civilization then that government is the best parokkar they are doing towards their subjects or that is the best uh that is the best possible way they are doing for the subjects so that's why it has been mentioned here that up to the age of or up to the region of maharaj yashoka lord buddha was also uh, sufficiently supported by king ashoka and he was able to uh, he was having the same spirit and he was leading his subjects in this matter of god consciousness so from this chapter we can conclude that maharaj parikshit even though has given this five places awards and punishments as well to the age of kaliyuga but still it is our duty as well to be very careful in our day to day duties and to take this guidance from the scriptures so that and whatever is favorable for our for our pro- progress of bhakti we should accept that and otherwise we should reject the other unwanted things which are uh, like the speed breakers on our path of bhakti and by following the footsteps of maharaj parikshit we will also be able to drive out this kali personified hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so i pause here so anybody would like to comment anything or want to add something or have any questions please come forward hare krishna all well prabhu no questions thank you very much uh, one small query uh, maharaj parikshit when he was there also kali was there or it, uh, that is the time when kali came in right yes bro that is the time when the kali personified came came there in his kingdom and, and so it is uh, in his kingdom only this uh, because it was at the end of dwapar yuga and beginning of kali yuga so the kali personified came at that time and maharaj parikshit took this strong action against him but still uh, maharaj parikshit was able to control him yeah he was able to control because he was the emperor of the whole world and all the other kings were his subordinates so okay yeah so he was able to control him because he was the uh, like we say here as the president or something so he was at this at the he was at the high position to control all his subordinate kings and those ever who have uh, who are not followers of god consciousness and who are uh, there to trouble such uh, merciful animals like cows and bulls so that's why he, and his duty was to protect them and since the kali was prevailing his activities so maharaj parikshit stopped him at that time and he just kicked him out from his kingdom and but Ma, this kali yuga the personified king was waiting for that time when there will be such places so then he could you know expand his expansion so this is what happened prabhu thank you prabhu ji hare krishna so bal prabhu would you like to add anything any points any realizations from your side Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu actually has got a call from office, so he had to leave just now. So, but thank oh. you very much, Prabhu. It was wonderful lecture. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Mataji. Whatever I spoke, I just heard and uh, from the uh, from the lectures and the teachings of Iskwan, our Guru Vrind. So, thank you so very much. And nothing belongs to mine. All glories to Shila Prabhupada and all the devotees. uh who are working tirelessly to give this transcendental knowledge to us so thank you so very much to all the vaishnava devotees 
for joining today. Vancha Kalpata Rubhasya, Kripa Sindhu Kevacha, Patitanam Pavanipyo, Vaishnavipyo Namunama. Upasthit Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Granthrashima Bhagavad Puran ki jai, Vitae Gaur Pramanande Hari Hari. Hari Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna.